What's going on investors desk here from investments today I'm going to bring you a video talking about the differences between the transfer tax and the deposit fees on beta pulsar so I want to start with the transfer tax and there is admittedly a relatively high transfer tax on B pole and BNT it is set for 8% and that transfer tax occurs anytime you're adding or removing liquidity selling or buying BNT or BPOL, sending BNT or BPOL, staking or unstaking, or harvesting or compounding. Because of this transfer tax, you will need to adjust your slippage to above 8% when you're transacting with BPOL or BNT. To do this, you just click the little gear up here, click slippage tolerance, and I just set it to 10%. Uh, you probably could get away with 9, but I just keep it at 10 so I don't get failures. Without doing this, your transaction will not go through. It will not process. You might get a failure or an error message here. Now of that 8% for BPOL, 7% of that is automatically burned and 1% is reflected into the leaderboard reward pool for people playing the PVP game. And that'll be distributed to the top 20 players in the leaderboard here. Uh, BNT is a little bit different, but not much. Again, there is an 8% tax, but the 8% is immediately burned. However, when you're playing the PVP, there's only a 4% tax instead of the 8%. So this transfer tax that is burned, it's burned automatically, and the team does not take any profits from the transfer tax. And you can even see that if you really look into these transactions. So for instance, I have 294 B pull in my wallet that I've earned through farming, and I'm gonna swap it into Matic on Quick Swap, okay? Confirm the transaction. And now that that's confirmed, we're gonna look at my address and look at the transaction here. So as you can see, 20.58 were taken automatically to a dead address 0x000 we'll open that up and look at it and then also 2.9 were taken to this address so we'll look at both those addresses so this is the dead address you can see they have a balance of two and a half million which is consistent with the total B pull burned and a total supply of four million ever created so it's consistent and you can see my transaction is listed on there and this happened automatically so then we look at the other address there's a balance of 2,252 BPOL. That is the 1% reflection fee. And now if we look at the arena leaderboard, you'll see the same number is about to be distributed in 17 hours. So that's the breakdown of the transfer tax. It's important to note that none of this goes to the developers. And really the only reason for this fee is to act as a deflationary mechanism to automatically burn BPOL and BNT. Otherwise, what you're going to see is you're going to see a drastic price drop, just like many of the other farms. So this acts as a deflationary mechanism um, to automatically burn some of the supply. And as you can tell, based on the relative stability of the price, granted it's down a little bit, it's been working pretty well. So then the other fee we want to talk about is the deposit fee. And this is a typical deposit fee that you see for non-native pools. So if you were to deposit your Rapmatic, you're gonna pay a 4% deposit fee. Or any of these other coins, for instance, USDC, DAI, whatever. You're gonna pay a 4% fee. In the previous layers of Pulsar, three-fourths of the fees were used for buybacks and one-fourth was sent to the dev address. They've abandoned that now, and instead three-fourths of the deposit fees for buybacks are sent to the people in the leaderboard. So again, in the Pulsar Arena leaderboard, the second half of that comes from the deposit fees. This is an effort to promote the games and reward the game players, which is what Poly Pulsar is supposed to be all about. So that does mean one fourth is still sent to the dev address of the deposit fees, which is a relatively small amount in comparison to other projects. So it's important to note that they're also not planning on using those fees as they have in the past to do buybacks and burns like you see in other projects. They're hoping that the transfer tax of 8% in the games will act as enough of a deflationary mechanism, but they do still reserve that right in case they want to. So that's all I got for this video. I just wanted to clear up any confusion about the difference between 
these two fees, the deposit fee and the transfer tax, and explain them and show that these are automatically being burned and also the reason for it. If you've got any questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the comments below. If you appreciate this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you appreciate this content, don't forget to subscribe. Till next time. Later.